of the Washington Policy That's Center. That's right, Dave. He's Mr. on the phone with Chris us. Chris Cargill. <laughs> He's Chris Cargill. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. How are you guys? We're good, Chris. How about yourself? Is it as pretty up in Spokane as it is here in Yakima? Yeah. It is. It was a beautiful weekend. Outstanding. How about this Very, morning? very warm. And now we'll probably have 50 degrees and rain for <laughs> the next six weeks. <laughs> well, we hope not. Jeez. Yeah. What's going on with the legislative session? Another one here? we got a new legislative session coming up. Are they actually going to do this? Well, I mean, uh, legislators, of course, as, as we talked about, left their um, Olympia or their virtual setting less than a month ago. But there are some who believe they still have unfinished business, and those are the words that most taxpayers probably fear most. Yeah. Uh, among the apparent items uh, that are unfinished are a possible transportation package, which we've been talking about, and, of course, this fight over emergency orders from the governor. Uh, some may view it as irrelevant now that the state is finally moving forward on reopening plans, uh, but it should uh, still should be a topic of conversation that, that we're having around the state. The issue is, should any governor have the authority to shut down the entire state uh, or certain sectors of the economy for more than a year without legislative oversight? Uh, many state legislators sought to rein in their governors, whether they were, were Republican or Democrat during the past year. Washington state legislators uh, essentially abdicated that responsibility to provide oversight. There were numerous yeah. bills that were defeated that would have required the legislature to chime in on emergency powers after certain periods of time. Of course, you want governors to, to have emergency powers, say if there's a flood or an earthquake, a volcano, something that is an emergency, but unchecked power for months on end can really be dangerous and, and harmful. We finally started to see some movement on this issue from the governor's own party when many Pierce County Democrats expressed frustration that the governor was allowing other counties to disregard COVID reopening um, stats that they had and stay in current phases. And Pierce County was not given that benefit. And the governor heard about it, which may be why he announced uh, last week that the entire state was going to be moving forward just weeks after saying that the state was on edge of a, a fourth COVID wave. So we will, we will wait and see on that. Well, you think, I mean, it, do you think there's the political will all across the board to take away the powers of the of the governor? Well, it's not necessarily take away any powers. I mean, it's as simple as saying, okay, should should a governor's order on shutdowns yeah. uh, last for 60 days before the legislature has to come in and approve it, mm. or should it last for 30 days, or should it just be unlimited? That's really the issue, um, and. As, as everyone learned in their civics class, we have a separation of powers. We have a, a, a balance uh, of powers uh, set up in our country and in our state that allows the legislature to check the governor, the governor to check the legislature, the Supreme Court to check both. So, I mean, there should really be no question that the legislature should have to come in at some point and sign off on these things. Uh, you've got 150 people in the legislature who were also elected by the people of Washington state, and they are uh, supposed to have a, a vote and a say in, in this as well. I mean, there's a very good chance that they may just approve the same exact thing that the governor is doing and wants to do. And if yeah. that's the case, then, then so be it. But you still need to have that legislative oversight. We yeah, we got everything else though that they wanted, right? I mean, I mean, so if we were to go back in a legislative say, we're not going to talk about capital, uh, capital tax. I mean, so what what other things could they really be talking about? Well, I mean, we could also be talking about a transportation package that may be in the works. Who knows what that's mm. going to include? But. Oh. The, the one that seemed to have the most interest during the regular session had more than 30 different fee and tax increases, including a gas tax hike. Um, different environmental bills passed the legislature that also assumed passage of a transportation tax, but, uh, tax, but the governor may end up vetoing those parts. And also keep in mind that if the legislature does come back into special session, it can be a free-for-all. Any good bills or bad bills that didn't wow. make it last time yeah. could be brought up uh, once again, and we could be in for another roller coaster of a lawmaking process. So 
We will have to watch closely to see what happens. Uh, I was asked this morning, you know, to kind of give a timeline of when when I think we'll probably see something happen. And I would bet that if we don't see a special session called maybe before the end of September or October, that mm-hmm. legislators will probably just throw their hands up in the air and say, eh, let's just worry about it in January when we come back for our regular session. Mm-hmm. Or let's just move to make his uh, powers permanent, and yeah. uh, Washington can lead the nation with the first uh, monarchy uh, among the 50 states. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's another option, too. We could step out smartly and show the rest of them how it's yeah. done. Yeah. We've got the right guy on top. Why mess around with elections, right? Well, and, it, you know, you saw uh, states like Ohio and Idaho and, and, if, and even some uh, talk about this in California as well come in and say, look, we want to make sure that we're, we're checking uh, the governor's power, no matter who that governor may be. I mean, we have Republicans and Democrats in some of these states that the legislature have, has stepped in and said, we want to be able to sign off on some of this stuff. Well, let's go to Michigan. How many other uh, Michigan Supreme Court basically said, "Hey, Governor, you've uh, overstepped." Did they not? Right, uh, and Wisconsin as well. So, yes, there have been other states that have that have stepped in. We have probably been the one state that has said, eh, "No big deal. Let's just let the governor do it." Our, our courts have said that. I mean, did we get that far with? Uh... Well, there, yeah, there were there were courts uh, in our states that heard uh, challenges to the mask mandate, heard challenges to uh, the economic uh, uh, economic restrictions that the governor had put in place, and the courts rejected those. It wasn't the state supreme court? It was the lower courts, but the courts still rejected them. Uh, and part of the reason for that is because. The legislature hasn't acted. The governor has extraordinary powers. And so those courts have just interpreted what's in the Constitution. And and quite frankly, you can't really blame those courts because they're just following what's in there and what the people has have approved um, in our state. But the question is, should the legislature go in and change that so that they have more of a say? Well, when you look, I mean, what, how is the Michigan Constitution written? The Wisconsin Constitution written? I mean, are they significantly different? That uh, when it, yeah, when it comes to the the executive branch's emergency powers, yes. Huh. Wow. Well, shut my mouth and call me slappy. <laughs> call you Betsy. Yeah, I guess. Well, that's ridiculous. I mean, it, it, on the surface, it seems like any time you make a provision. To step out of the norm and give special powers to uh, any aspect of the uh, political system, there there should be a sunset on that or a, a review or something. Yes, absolutely, and that's exactly what we have advocated for, and others have advocated for as well. And as I mentioned, there were bills that were introduced that said, okay, after 60 days or 30 days or whatever, the legislature has to step in, but all of them were rejected. Um, which, you know, is, is dangerous for the future as well, because then governor, other governors can come in and, and start fiddling around, and we have the precedent now of the legislature not stepping in and reasserting its role. Well, it's ridiculous. Um, there's a number of things that uh, when I become king, I would change, and it would, uh, it would include that. It would include uh, those no-title bills, those middle-of-the-night uh, push things yep. through. Those things would be on there. Um, declaring things emergencies so the public can act on them, even though they're not, they'd be on there. I mean, we, we've done a lot of stupid things in this state that have, <laughs> that have really corralled off powers. It's it's yeah. it, it's nuts. It is, and a lot of these things are in direct uh, conflict and in direct. Uh, you know, I don't want to call it an assault, but they are. They're a hit at voters who who should be able to trust uh, elected officials to to go in to perform their duties and to make sure that they are uh, upholding uh, the state constitution and and the will of voters. And unfortunately, especially over the past ten or fifteen years, we've seen that kind of slip away a bit. If it's not an assault, it's at least an insult. Uh, yes, I, I think that's a good uh, good uh, yeah. a term to use. It is an insult to to the voters, but the voters have to be willing to pay attention to this 
<laughs> and then hold elected officials uh, who do not follow that accountable. And sometimes, in fact, oftentimes, they don't. All right, before we let you get out of here, Chris, uh, Lance has been bugging me to ask you this. Where were you on the night of the 7th? No, uh, that's a whole other conversation. Um, Chris Ch- uh, uh, Lynn Cheney's out there. Yeah. Liz, Ch- Liz Cheney. Liz Cheney. Who's Lynn Cheney? Who's Lon Cheney? Lynn Cheney? Lynn is her mother, the former second lady. There you go. Um, so Ms. Ch- Ms. Cheney is saying, if we don't watch it, the uh, incident at the Capitol could happen again. What do you say to something like that? We've, we've talked about that briefly on the show this morning and given our opinion about you know, what it is, what it was, and what brought that about. What do you think when you hear her say that? Well, um, I would hope it doesn't happen again. I mean, that was a that was a terrible day um, that I think could have been stopped, quite frankly, by uh, not only a cooling of of the the temperatures and the the language that we were hearing from some parties, but also by better security. And if you look at the um, if you look at some of the tweets from the mayor of D.C. the night before. Uh, that uh, that incident on January 6th, uh, they were basically saying that they didn't want more troops, that they didn't want more security to come in and, and protect things, to stay out, essentially. And I think that's a dangerous uh, part of this whole conversation as, as well. Um, you know, as far as the whole Liz Cheney uh, stuff goes, I mean, uh, look, you want your political party to have a di- – a diverse uh, set of opinions and so that it's a large tent uh, and filled with a lot of different people but at the same time that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have them in leadership um, in in your party as well so the party gets to choose who's who are the leaders and who are not uh, the leaders and and of course Kathy McMorris Rogers our congresswoman woman from Washington State was in Liz Cheney's position before Liz Cheney, and she decided to step aside and let someone else have a have a chance. And now it looks like we're going to get someone else in that position as well. Okay, um, I don't know that I'm going to give you uh, uh, an A on that one. And here's, <laughs> and here's why, Mr. Okay. Eastern Washington Director, Washington Policy Center. Um, I, I, I just don't. I just don't think that Ms. Cheney gets what that was about. How opportunistic it was. Um, coinciding with a little bit of uh, outside planning. I mean, there was no attack. There was no insurrection. Half the people that went in there were gawkers. The other half were jerks. Um, I I don't see that's, quote, where the party is. And and I don't see any sort of event that's going to pull hundreds of thousands back there again so something like this could happen. This isn't who the Republican Party is. And I think that to speak like that just says that she's out of touch. Can you concur or must we disagree? Um, I think I I agree with some parts of that, not all. Um, I I, I would, I, I, I hate to think what would have happened if some of those people who entered the building actually were able to get a Congress a person or a senator cornered in a room. Really? Um, I, I don't know what would have happened, but I, I have concerns for, for what that means, both Republicans and Democrats. Uh, if, if we just basically throw our hands up in the air and say it wasn't that big of a deal, um, I would hope that nothing would have happened to them, but I fear that something would have happened uh, to – maybe make the situation even worse. I, of course, all of this is hindsight, and you never know what's, what's going to happen in the future. And I, I'm not one to stand here and say that this would never happen again, because it did happen just four or five months ago, and, and who knows what, what would happen in the future. Um, but I, I certainly hope that the better angels of our nature would prevent that from happening again, regardless of who's in power. Okay, well, I, I, I see it that there's a lot more uh earthbound based decisions and considerations as to why it happened and it wouldn't take uh, better angels to, to keep us from going there again I, I think that was a uh you know the a perfect storm of of things that happened and uh, well i hope you're right i mean i hope that that i hope it never happens again 
Um, and let's just let's just pray that that's the case. Amen, sir. Amen. Chris Cargill, Eastern Washington Director, Washington Policy Center, Lance.